The U.S. is taking major steps in the global race to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. Moderna has announced it will conduct its final stage of testing next month with 30,000 volunteers. Meantime, Johnson & Johnson has moved up its first human trials from September to July with a little over 1,000 volunteers on board. Direct Dr. Bill Moss is executive director of the International Vaccine Access Center at Johns Hopkins University. He joins us live now from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Bill, thank you so much for being with us. So just in terms of this Moderna vaccine that is in the works, what do we know about phase, the phase one of this clinical trial in terms of how patients have responded so far? Yeah, so this is an important milestone important to understand it's very early process what we learned from phase one is that the vaccine is uh, shows safety in small numbers of individuals these were healthy individuals who were uh, enrolled in the phase one trials it gave us some sense about the dose and and moderna has selected the middle dose to go forward into these phase three trials and also, it's given us a clue about the, what well, we say, the immunogenicity of the vaccine. Reduce the type of immune response that we think is protective. But what the phase one, and, and currently that vaccine is in phase two, uh, which is a, a slightly larger study, several hundred, um, where we, uh, Moderna will again assess the, the safety and, and look at the vaccine responses in different types of individuals, not just healthy young individuals. But this, this next step into phase three, as you mentioned, into 30,000 individuals is really the critical part because this is where we begin to see whether the vaccine actually protects against disease. Their primary outcome is be going to be whether the vaccine protects against symptomatic disease, whether people get any symptoms from the disease. But they'll also be looking at whether this vaccine induces sterilizing immunity. That means that it protects and prevents prevents infection itself, and they will be looking at to see whether this vaccine prevents severe disease, whether people will need to actually get the disease will be hospitalized. But I, I see this again as just a, a one of the early steps. This is the, the development and, and testing stage of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. we'll still need to assess the manufacturing capacity, the, the deployment and the supply chain, and general acceptance of the vaccine going forward. So assuming that everything pans out and, you know, Moderna wins the race, uh, how, does, how does each government prioritize it in every country who ends up getting the vaccine first? Yeah, this is a, it's a, a very uh, difficult, challenging question that the world is going to face uh, in the very new future and near future. First of all, we probably won't just have one winner. We'll, we want to have multiple winners. Um, we want to have multiple winners in different countries uh, that will increase the access globally. But it's going to be a really difficult decision for uh, countries, and, and particularly vaccines coming out of these public-private partnerships, uh, for example, between the U.S. government and Moderna. How is that vaccine going to be uh, used? Hopefully, there'll be some uh, uh, really serious deliberate deliberations around who who are the priority individuals. We're not going to have a vaccine for everyone right away, so we're going to need to prioritize which countries get the vaccine, and then within each country, which individuals get the vaccines. And hopefully those are going to be the individuals who are at high risk mm -hmm. of infection, mm -hmm. and particularly those who are most vulnerable. So perhaps the elderly and people with underlying conditions as well. Um, all right, uh, Bill Moss, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.